how does NASA know what 3i Atlas is really made of? Well, they do what nuclear engineers do. They infer it probabilistically using spectroscopy. Kind of like radiation monitors in a reactor. You don't see the isotope itself, you see its signature. Because I'm seeing a lot of theories. Yes, and that's because it gives constraints rather than certainty. Turns out they use light. Because light interacts with different molecules in different ways. Yes, due to quantum energy levels. Same physics as neutron capture gammas, or nuclear fuel analysis. Just photons instead of neutrons. And so each has its own unique signature. For the most part, though they can overlap, they can also broaden with temperature, or be masked by dust in this case. That's why it's a range. So here's oxygen, and nitrogen, and hydrogen. So some telescopes have special equipment that turn observable objects into these rainbowy light graphs that let us read the universe like a book. Spectra, data products. And it's more like reading a damaged book through fog, but... Sure. For example, here's Earth as viewed by the James Webb Space Telescope. Now that would be a calibration source because obviously we know what the Earth is. So this is how you would validate it. Here's water and carbon dioxide and oxygen and there's ozone and some other gases. All via absorption bands, not direct sampling. Same way you look at boron concentration in the reactor. After all, nobody wants to taste the reactor coolant. And what's really cool is this method can also tell us things about temperature and density and more. Yes, Doppler shifts can give you thermal and density information. Kind of like how plasma diagnostics work in fusion experiments. It's how we know that there's water vapor on a planet 700 light years away. We have a high level of confidence. You don't know for sure because we haven't been there. All this stuff has a range and uncertainty. So they're filling in the rainbow chart for 3i Atlas, and early versions from the James Webb Space Telescope look like this. You need to be careful with early readings. They're low signal to noise. It'd be like telling the entire reactor coolant temperature just by looking at one thermocouple. You can see lots of carbon dioxide and water. But Maybe. researchers are now <laughs> analyzing images from the comet's closest approach. And this is where your confidence goes up. Higher flux, better resolution, less uncertainty. 